Lady Elizabeth, thank you very much indeed mm. for uh, welcoming to your beautiful <laughs> home. How long uh, have you been here? Uh, 43 years. What can you tell us about um, royal parties that you've organised in the past? Yeah, they're, they're so different uh, to, you know, what they were, because I think my first royal one was, I started in 1960, probably was 1960, something for the Green Mother or something. And um, life in, in the 60s was pretty formal. You know, they were pretty sort of set things. So therefore a royal party wasn't very different to somebody else's party. Um, in the way that now, you know, there are so many sort of gimmicks and odd... And, I mean, I remember it being absolutely amazing when Prince Andrew was 18 or 21, having lasers. Nobody had seen lasers. Um, and, uh, but, I mean, the thing about a royal party is that, that the, first of all, the space is going to be very large, and it is unnerving. I think it's unnerving for anybody to go into those those parties, not that they want you to be unnerved. How much should people think to start to pay per head for a wedding? I personally feel that it is not necessary to have Grand Marc Champagne, to have caviar, to have all these things, because if you have the best pasta and the best salad, or the best bangers and the best mash, you are going to make your guests just as happy as you give them something very extravagant. You're probably going to make them happier because they're almost going to feel it's more homely. I mean, I've done great weddings on cottage pie. Um, Wasn't William? Did, didn't William have cottage pie? No, he had cottage pie. It's something I did okay. for him there. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I took gold dishes. Um, <laughs> isn't it lovely, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> ketchup and, and mustard out of gold sauce boats. I mean, solid gold sauce boats. Um, it was quite funny. Um, but... You know, I think that the idea of having a party is to help you and I get into there and relax. It's not to make us feel totally on edge because we don't quite know what we're doing at the next time. So all of that comes into my sort of side of it. I'm not going to say to them they can't have Lafitte, but I would say to them, look, you've got a hundred guests here, or two hundred guests, or three hundred guests, and I'm going to tell you now that only 30 people in this room are going to realise you've given them such a fine wine. Mm. Why not wait and have something that's very drinkable and have that when you've got some people who really love wine? Mm. Um, and then people sort of say, why do you do that? Because you make so much more money if you sell expensive wine. And I say, because I'm a Scot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated. What happens? Does Her Majesty ring you and say, come and organise this party for me? How does that go? A bit like that. Does it? Mm. Help. And is it, are all, all the final plans always passed by Her Majesty before, or is it down to the She bride? is amazing about her attention to detail, and amazing. I think a lot of people think she doesn't want to be involved, and she really does love it, hearing all the detail. And I've never known anybody in my life, and I certainly am not like that myself, who actually checks every place when it's laid at a dining room table, even if it's a dinner for eight. I mean, she's got an immaculate eye. And, you know, she checks it, and if there's a fork missing or something, she'll... Do you settle. ever disagree about the detail? Never. <laughs> I don't believe you! I don't no, believe because you. I don't work like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. The thing is, my job is not to work on what I think is right. If I think it's horrendously wrong and somebody's going to, you know, fall over 16 barrels of... Uh, bags or whatever, yeah. I mean, I'll say it. Or if I think that they're trying to squash 500 people into a space that takes 200, I will say yeah. it. What sort of challenges will Megan be facing, organising or being involved in this? How, how much involvement will she have in, in her Well, own there'll wedding? be a certain amount. Uh, they, they, when, when I first did Royal Weddings, now this will really make me feel like... Which was the myself. first one you did? The first one I helped with, I think, was Princess Alexandra. Right. Now, the guests all wore long dresses, the women. And you wore long dresses, and, and actually it wasn't known as a word then, but a sort of thing that was a bit like a fascinator. And it was called a hat. But it was really a fascinator, if you look back on it. And they were useless, because you either had to have a sort of jacket to it, or you had to have a long coat to it. And the first royal wedding that wasn't long dresses in England, because in, in abroad they kept on doing it, was the Duke of Kent's wedding to Catherine Worsley, because it was at... Um, York Minster, was, uh, and, and I think it was 
thought that it was, I mean, if it was in the Abbey or <coughs> St Paul's or something, it sort of seemed to work with long dresses. And after that, that part of it became normal. What is not at all normal about the average royal wedding is that they have a very big ball, about two, two nights before, let's say, which is all the guests are going to be involved, all the guests are going to be in the Abbey or in the church and everything, and a lovely dance and whoop to do and a day to get over it. And then you have the church service at 11 o'clock. And then 99% of the congregation go home and try and find a sandwich. And the rest of them go back, only about 50 of them go back to have, have lunch. Now that all changed uh, when Prince Edward married Sophie Rhys Jones. And Prince Edward was a great traveller. I mean, he's gone abroad to lots of weddings, so he's sort of seen things like that. And he decided to have a wedding, which was very foreign, at four o'clock, um, in white tie and the women in long dresses. And then afterwards go on to reception, followed by dinner, followed by dancing. And there was no question, there was no murmur of a hat. Um, so that was, you know, a relief. Until about two days before when a cousin of mine rang me up and said, the Queen decided to wear a hat. <laughs> and I said, well, I just can't wear a hat with my particular dress. Um, and it did look rather funny. I can't remember if the people took them off, you know, before they had dinner. Well, what they did, so that became a sort of more like a continental wedding. And then you go and the next wedding is Prince William. Now what that, was your involvement with William's wedding? Quite a lot. Yeah. Because um, Prince William's wedding, I don't know that it needed to be completely like this because he was not, it's not as though he was, um, you know, he wasn't, out, he's won away from out of the yeah. throne. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think to begin with, he was given the most terrifying list with all sorts of dignitaries and people on it. And he said to his grandmother, you know, I don't know how to cope with this. And she rather sweetly said, tear it up and start again and put your friends down and then see what. And then Prince Charles decided to ask Europe, not only Europe, Lesotho, Swaziland, you know, all sorts of things. Well, who was going to look after him the night before the wedding? Me. And so I did that. And that was quite fun. And then I looked after them. What did that involve? It involved a dinner. Um, and all those foreign roles know each other quite well, so they're all quite pleased to see each other. And I included a lot of commoners too, who I knew would be going to the wedding so that they had somebody to talk to the next day. Challenging dietary requirements? I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, avoided, I avoided bacon. <laughs> you know, it, it is the most terrifying thing. I mean, I will never do it at a party. Actually put the wor those words, direct requirements. If I think if somebody's got an allergy to something they really can't eat, they're going to tell me. The easiest thing ever to do is to try and make the first course vegetarian. Because if the first course is vegetarian, you haven't got to worry about, about that, because mm. that's, that's quite high on the list. Mm. Um, so what did the day actually involve as far as William was concerned? Well, the day. The day involved, the night involved, luckily, that, I mean, the Queen, she said, I think I'll go home early, maybe everybody else would. So she went home at about half past o'clock, I think. The day sort of seemed to involve an awful lot of very early starts, and I was in charge of these foreign royalties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, my relations through marriage, the, the European ones. But, I mean, I'm not related to the King of Swaziland or King of Lesotho. Or, but I was in charge of them. And so when we came out of the Abbey, I had to sort of follow these sort of robes, because robes came out last. And I thought it would be awfully nice if they'd give me a nice soldier to walk behind me down the Abbey, as opposed to just me, sort of purple person looking, just sort of <laughs> mushing up their skirts. Um, and I then had to marshal them all into black buses and get them up to the rooms. And I had to, King Swaz, King of Tonga rather, who um, was enormous, but had taken an awful lot of weight um, and was on a stick. Um, said to me the night before, I'm really worried when I go tomorrow because I'm very heavy. 
and I don't want to break any of Her Majesty's chairs. So I said, don't worry, I will, I will, I'll guide you to something. And I said, the things that look very squat with tiny legs are absolutely solid as anything and nobody can break them. Um, and uh, he didn't break them. Having got them into all these rooms, so the next thing was that, they, that every crowned head had to sign the register, but nobody had actually told me about this. And then somebody did, and I didn't have anybody to help me. I don't know why I didn't have anybody to help me. That became really rather a bore, so in the end, actually, I did find a, a very nice soldier, and I got him to hold the book, and I went round and I said, would you mind signing the Queen's Visitor's Book? Because it just sort of speeded it up. Yeah. And we had canapes, and it was much more modern, because Catherine and William had been to lots of weddings. This is where it started to change, because with the rest of them, um, they hadn't, in the pre um, predecessors, they hadn't been to lots of weddings, mm. so they didn't know what to expect. But Catherine and William had probably been to more weddings than most people between them, so they actually knew what they wanted. And um, so as opposed to not having anything afterwards, we all went back to the palace, and we had canapes at lunchtime. And what sort of canapes? It's sort of mostly savoury, mm -hmm. and quite small by then because Charles and Camilla's weddings they were quite big. And it's tricky, isn't it, when you've got a glass and then it's more it than is. two bites? Oh it? yes, it is. So therefore, it's got to be a one bite. Mm. And and um, one of these hugely big, actually Swaziland was the biggest. Suddenly said to me, "Where's lunch?" And that was lunch. <laughs> but there was more food in the evening, wasn't there? No, but then there was a break, there was a break. But you see, none of these old and grand people came in the evening. Right. Um, Stopped off at McDonald's on the way yes, home. Yes, yeah, yeah. One, of the, one lot did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and there was another lot went into an Italian restaurant. Um, and it, was, it wasn't enough. I mean, they were very good, but it wasn't enough. And I tried to get them out of our, uh, the sort of three royal rooms to mix in with the people I'd introduced them to the night before. And somehow the palace hadn't got the message, and we weren't really allowed out, so we were sort of rather stuck. Um, because they weren't really used to doing it that, that way. And I think, that, I mean, this is this one, and Princess Ocean, is a completely different even to that. Do you think there'll be sibling rivalry with this wedding? And Harry will be looking at what William did and think, oh, we're not going to do that, or no. we are going to do that. No. Because I don't think that, I think, remember that Megan. Sorry, I it's okay. I've got a little bit because I was. I've been calling her Megan. No, it's Megan. Me Megan. That's right. Megan. Yeah. Megan. Yeah. Um, because Megan is more in charge of all of that, mm. so I think it will be more Americanized. Um, what do you think that form will take when you say Americanized? What do American weddings? I've never been to an no, American no, wedding. No, no, no. I did actually ask somebody: Is there a rehearsal dinner? Right. You know, because in America they always have rehearsal yeah. dinners. As far as I know, there isn't. Um, now, I, I would say that she was taking care of that sort of detail, and um, I did rather, maybe wrongly or rightly, but say to the chef, you have to remember an awful lot of people who have been in the army are going to be at this wedding, and they will think this is lunch. You know, because it's, it's not really lunch. I mean, as, as far as the meal's concerned. Mm. So feed that, them properly is what you mean? Yeah, what I'm saying, put back the bridge rails that turned up at um, Prince Charles's wedding. Nobody yet, because it was three bites. Um, and feed them. But the thing is, I think they're going to be away from the castle by half past three. Mm. And then have a break, and then they'll go to, go to the after party. Which Charles is throwing? I think Charles is throwing the after party. I read that in, in Hello magazine, so it must be right. Certainly it's right. <laughs> <laughs> and wasn't there fireworks as well? Yes. Looking forward to that. It's, no. must, it's very different, isn't it, when you have sort of, you know, because we are two nations divided by a common language, us mm, and, the, mm. and the Americans. It must be quite a challenge organising a wedding or a party where it's two different nationalities. Well, I've done a lot of American weddings. Mm. Um, and very often, and I've done lots and lots of foreign weddings because sometimes people find it easier to say, let's go and get married in London because then they can have less people. Do you see what I mean? Mm. If, they, if they were at home, they'd have to ask, let's say, 100 people. And if they want to keep it very small, they could have it 20. Yeah, but they're not 20s. But the difference that we don't have, that they have, and I have not a clue what's happening on this, um, is they have rehearsal dinners. Mm. And the rehearsal dinner the night before is for all the people who've travelled very far. So anybody that says, come over from America or 
Australia or New Zealand or France or whatever they've come into the country mm. gets invited to the rehearsal dinner. Mm -hmm. And then there are a whole lot of extremely embarrassing speeches to the bride. And then the bride has to nifty off by about 10 and um, the wedding's the next day. Mm. I hear Megan's actually going to make a speech, which would be lovely. Well, well it'd be very interesting. Mm. But you see, none of us will hear it, will we? Why not? Because it won't be broadcast. No, but you're going to be there, aren't you? Oh, probably I'm in the dustbins. <laughs> <laughs> that moment. <laughs> um, as far as cakes are concerned, when I got married, I actually had a chocolate wedding mm. cake, and I think Kate's. Uh, I think uh, Megan's having an elderflower cake. Yeah. I read. I mean, do you, are you a traditionalist when it comes to cakes? No, not at all. Oh, okay. But I am a practical person, and as soon as I heard that that her elderflower cake was coming, I thought to myself, a plate, a fork, a napkin. Mm -hmm. With the traditional wedding cake, nothing extra. So you've got the plate, the fork, and the napkin, and the elderflower cake, the handbag, the glass, the whole thing. Because I imagine an elderflower cake is not something you pick up in your fingers and no. and eat. So you're not worried about the washing up, it's more about everything that it's you're more, carrying? No, it's more about the fact is are they going to drip elderflower cake down the front of their frocks because they haven't got anything to put it on? Yeah. Or, you know, how it's going to be served. Mm. I think there's going to be a fruit one as well. Oh, good. Mm. Good. Um, how are you on these clips that go on the side of a plate so you can put your glass on them? I, I'm never I've sure watched, about I mean, I've watched disasters because yeah. what happens on the whole, I mean, it all looks terrific. Mm. And then you decide, oh, I'm rather fed up with this plate. And you put it down, and because the glass hits the thing, the glass goes up in the air and all the wine goes all the way over the food. And actually, they are a complete disaster. Mm. I mean, they'd, be, they'd work if you had a sort of special glass, I think. Mm. But if you can imagine, you'll think, oh, I think I'll get rid of this. You don't necessarily think, I better take the wine glass out of it. And you go like that, and as you can see what would happen, the stem of the glass goes. You've done quite a few um, celebrity parties as well, haven't you? Mm. Mick Jagger? Mm -hmm. um, what was the most... Oh, tell me about his party. What can you tell me about that, first of all? Um, I've done quite, I did quite a few for him, but I did one for all of them. The Stones, down at a very dilapidated hotel in Maidenhead, where I knew however much they sort of bashed and crashed, they, they couldn't really get us for redecoration. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that before, the redecoration in hotels, and um, it was on the River Thames, and I think more Don Perignon ended up in the Thames than it did get drunk, and in fact I was asked to get divers the next day to go down and retrieve it. The bottles? Yeah. But I mean, Mick Jagger's a very civilised, terribly nice person. I mean, with all these things, it's, you know, how are the guests going to behave? That's the only... That's the only sort of thing in everything. I mean, it could happen at Prince Harry's. I mean, how do you know how his guests are going to behave at the after party? You don't. They're royals. They're going to behave well, aren't they? Uh, I would imagine so. What does that mean? No, it's just that I did one, not at all a wedding, but something else. And I thought, oh, this is fine, and they'll all remain perfectly sober, and I don't have to worry about security here and security there, and I've never got it more wrong. Never got it more wrong. And it was very much, because the royal family didn't have very much money, so it was very much sort of me and my staff doing the clearing out, um, or the changing of tables, and uh, that generation, you know, who decided they weren't going to get given enough to drink, used to bring their half bottles of rum, whiskey, gin, vodka, the amount of empty bottles under the table. It was desperate, <laughs> desperate. Goodness. And I thought, no, 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 they're all going to behave so well. Young people mm. for you. No, you see. They don't know what the royal family looks like, half of them the friends anyway. Do you see what I mean? They don't know who they're behaving badly with. But um, should we say Harry's too old for that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say that. Yeah. Do you know anything about the celebrations that you can tell us about? No, I can't tell you anything about that. Okay. Um, I think it's going to be been, fabulous, though. We can say that. They've been very, we? very generous in what they've let the general public know that you don't know, normally know. I mean, you don't normally know you're going to have an elderflower cake mm. or that the, the florist is going to be X mm. or, 
you, you don't know those sort of things. Mm. And um, so I think they've been very generous in what they've, what one's seen. How much one reads is true, I don't know. Um, I'm just wondering how she's going to get up the steps of the church, but I think she'll probably go in through the side entrance. Well, I remember Her Majesty going up the steps of St Paul's um, for a service when uh, the Duke of Edinburgh was in hospital at the time when he was yep. poorly during one of her, um, um, I want to say it was probably the Golden Jubilee. It was, when he got rained on in yeah, the boat. Yeah, and she walked up those steps on her own all the way up to St Paul's and she did look quite frail, but she, you know, she managed it, so I'm sure a she sprightly 35-year-old could do it. She wasn't wearing a two-ton wedding dress with no. the, without the father on the side. No. No, but alone. I mean, she was alone. going to be there at the top of the steps. Oh right. So, but you know, if she's thirty-five, I'm sure she'll be skipping up those steps. She's about to marry her prince. <laughs> I hear that they're going to. Be, they're hopeful to have a baby within a year. Good for them. Good for them. Um, most extravagant request you've ever received. I'm not very good at extravagance, because I actually rather deplore it. Um, so probably I'm spending my time saying I really don't think it's necessary to have that. Um, I did have a very extravagant request last year, though, and actually, in the, uh, I think the wonderful thing, uh, if you can do it with extravagance, is to do something and it doesn't look as though it's loads of money. If you suddenly do a party where you do huge bowls, tipped like this of caviar, the whole way around the room, that is extravagance. And that, to me, is vulgar. That's opulence where it goes wrong. But when you can do something, possibly with the same amount of caviar, but in a different presentation. So far, I'm very, I'm not, I'm particularly not known for extravagance. I'm much more known for sort of calm elegance. What tips would you offer people who are um, going along to their first royal wedding? Don't take a present because there won't be anywhere to put it. Don't be late. Uh, treat it as anything else. And remember, it's two human beings who are actually doing something one hopes that they really want to do, which is getting married. And there's nothing really, because all those people, whatever grand titles and things they've got, underneath that whole thing, whole thing they are human beings. So if you they go look with that so they're hopelessly in love as well, don't they? It's don't they? I mean, it's, abs but, but it's, it's actually not gross, is it? No. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. just adoring. Mm. And what are your tips for the bride to enjoy her day? Remember when you're planning your wedding, not that this exists in this one, not to have it too late in the day, because from the moment you wake up that morning, it's your wedding day. And if it's at five o'clock and you wake up at six in the morning, it's a long day. This is actually rather a day of getting up incredibly early, I would imagine she'd have to get up, mm. um, in order to get ready to go by 11 o'clock. Mm. So what's your tip for her to have a great day? Eat porridge. <laughs> Line your stomach before mm. you start. And not too much booze. No, probably not before. <laughs> I don't know, I think you have to put yourself into a your own cocoon, really. I mean, I can't imagine. This is the, probably the most media attentive wedding there's ever been in our family. What do you think would be judged as a success for this royal wedding? How would it be judged as successful? Um, I think it's, I think in general, because the public are so behind this and are particularly so behind Harry, that whatever it is, it's going to be a success if you can understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Um, I think that it's actually, and I, I, I mean, I even said it to them, I mean, I, the sort of when they got engaged in those photographs and that interview, it actually made your heart really feel warm towards them. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, it's so lovely that you can give all the rest of us such pleasure through your own happiness. And I think that's key. And no, nobody ever has, has been so tactile before. So you wouldn't really have known whether what they felt about each other. But this was sort of completely natural and very tactile. Mm -hmm. We certainly know what love is with those two. We do. We? And yet it hasn't been embarrassing. No, it hasn't. No. Lady Elizabeth, it's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much. Thanks for your time.